Welcome back to What's Up Oxford. I have Lindsay Wilson, the Community Impact and Engagement Manager from United Way Oxford. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. So uh, you wanted to come and talk about the Community Service Recovery Fund. What is that? Yeah, so the Community Services Recovery Fund, which we say CR, CSR, a lot faster to say, uh, was a $400 million investment from the Government of Canada during COVID uh, to support uh, organizations that were kind of adapting and recovering from COVID. So United Ways across Canada were one of three kind of national funding partners along with uh, Red Cross and community foundations to kind of get that money out into the community where it was needed and where it would have impact. And, and what areas did the money go to? Yeah, so in, uh, in Oxford, we were able to fund eight projects, just a little over $342,000. Uh, so some of the examples of the projects it went to was the Salvation Army in Tilsonburg, uh, just uh, worked away at getting kind of a day space, a hub where vulnerable people could go any time of day and kind of have a, a space to exist, get access to resources, maybe a warm meal, coffee, and kind of some skills development kind of things. Uh, so that's one of the projects we did. Uh, another great one was with DASO. They were able to kind of build out their nutrition program for the people who were staying at DASO. And the really great part about that project is our day of caring will kind of build on that success by installing some raised garden beds where they can grow vegetables that will use, be used in that program. So it's nice, these will kind of have some continued impact over the years. And so this came in 2020? A, a little bit after that, 2021, yeah. I believe. Uh, and, and don't quote me, I wasn't at United Way at the time, but during, during COVID um, and certainly wrapping up at the end of June. So they've been chipping away at those projects over the last gotcha. year or so. Yeah. And so that money has gone and... It's all gone out into the community uh, and those organizations have kind of completed their projects. We'll be wrapping up the end of June um, and sharing their, their success and results uh, with our funder. Is there any other funding on the cards from the government or? We wish, of course, because as we know, um, I mean, that funding was to support pandemic recovery, which I think we all thought might be short lived. Uh, but lots of organizations, especially nonprofit uh, community service organizations, the need has continued to grow and the financial uh, support for those organizations as people kind of struggle with the cost of living, the resources available to support them have shrunk. So so certainly the need continues to mm -hmm. be there. Great. Uh, and uh, what else is happening with the United Way? I, I think you just had a talk on diversity and inclusion. We did, it? yeah. So last week we hosted a uh, building an inclusive Oxford County, we called it. So the idea was to help people understand how to be more inclusive kind of in their daily behaviors. And so we had a group of over 50 people from all over Oxford County came together to do this training. So it was a great way for us all to connect kind of on an individual level, but also that will all go back to the organizations to kind of support the work that they're doing. Gotcha. And so uh, Oxford County, uh, where do you see like the main need for help from United Way? Yeah, that's a really great question. Uh, over the last little while, we started getting back into our community conversation. So that's where we go out to organizations like uh, Southgate Senior Center, youth serving organizations, and we have very almost like kitchen table conversations asking people, you know, what their needs are, what things are going on. Um, and it would be no surprise to hear that lots of people are concerned that there's not enough for everybody, mm -hmm. that lots of people are going without, that lots of people are struggling, uh, and, and that kind of continues to be within the conversations we've heard. But the really interesting thing that we've heard is the lack of connection. People really want to be able to feel connected to their community, to the resources that are available to them. Um, so it's not necessarily a resource issue, it's more like a, a social connection issue. So we've been talking a lot about how we could kind of support people and provide opportunity for people to connect, just you know, neighbor to neighbor kind of thing to feel more involved and connected in their community. Because yeah. I, I think during the pandemic, people, got so disconnected from Absolutely. each other, right? Absolutely, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, so kind of learning that, learning that again almost, and, and certainly a lot of that connection kind of came through volunteering, mm -hmm. and, and volunteering um, is something we always encourage people to do, but now especially volunteering is such a great way for people to get connected to others and to organizations in their community. And volunteers, volunteering has not really recovered to the level it was pre-pandemic. So if we can kind of match those things together, we could, we could probably solve a lot of those disconnected feelings in our community. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add today? Uh, we have our day of caring coming up on June 6th and our, our organizational projects are connected. So unfortunately, uh, the timeline to get involved that way has passed, but it's always a day where we encourage people to think about just random acts of kindness that they can do in their community. So that's another way to feel connected, just kind of thinking about something you could get involved in for mm. the day of caring to show kind of care and kindness for the people around you. Gotcha. Okay, well, thanks a lot for coming in. Thanks for having me.